Uh, the NA-1 is going down. The nose fell off. Oh, that's unfortunate. For them, I mean. Hello, YouTube! I am Lightly Salted, and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to the U-Boat in U-Boat. We had a fun little patrol last time around. If you missed that, there'll be a little indication at the top right of your screen. And we've put into port to resupply the boat. I've already had the captain working on that, getting us torpedoes, food, fuel, and the like. And as you'll see here at the top of the screen, we have two reputation points. And I'm thinking it's about time we start spending them. Skipper, let's go speak to the commanding officer, please. And we would like to ask for a few favors. And I'm thinking it's about time we increase our officer limit on board the boat to seven. So let's go ahead and request that. Fantastic. Now we still have one more reputation point, and that's going to be important to note here in a moment. All right, as we take a look at our crew layout, we have two leader types, we have two mechanics, and two radio operators. My personal playstyle is that I prefer to have three mechanics. That certainly cuts down on the amount of time you spend warming torpedoes prior to engagements. It also gives your chief engineer a chance to get rest more often. And in a pinch, of course, more hands to repair more things quickly is absolutely the best idea. So with our remaining point, I'll go into our crew management screen, and I'm going to choose one of our ordinary crew. Uh, let's see, just randomly, Mr. Alwyn Peters. We're going to go ahead to his promote screen, and we will promote him to an engineer, using our one last reputation point. Accept. Fantastic. Of course, Alwyn Peters is not going to be his name. We're going to go ahead and customize him. This is the U-Boat. Mr. Alwyn Peters is going to be renamed to... Seal. The Centurion. Seal Centurion is a uh, fellow U-Boat player, Twitch streamer. Puts on a fun little show. I highly suggest you check him out. There we are. New mechanic on board, Seal the Centurion. Seal, welcome aboard. Now you'll note down here he still shows up as Mr. Peters. His name is changed here. This will change the next time we load the game. And with all that out of the way, it's time to pick ourselves up a mission. Sector CE, um, this is not a bad sector. You tend to run into fairly large convoys here. We would pick up a war correspondent, get a little bit of extra budget and reputation, which is always fantastic. Joining the Port of Bergen, I will absolutely not be doing this. As I've mentioned in previous videos, all of this in here is a dead zone with nothing but missing U-boats and the occasional war patrol. I do not recommend it at all at this time. Sector AM, uh, often a lot of fun. 10,000 tons, foggy weather. I think CE may be the way to go here. We'll pick up 183% reputation as compared to 100%. And we'll be running a little less kilometers, so that's always a plus. We're going to go ahead and lock that in. Fantastic. All right, let's get everybody into position. Mr. Taff. On to navigation. Red, we'll have you on the diesels. Good job. And figure out exactly how we plan on getting there. So let's go ahead and lay in a course. And I'll see you in a moment. BDU has something to tell us. Let's go ahead and find out what they're on about. And the new message is, one of our ships has gone missing. Well, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Go ahead and lay in a course to our missing friend. See what we can do about that. Now this is interesting. We have one day, 21 hours left to reach our objective of our U-boat friend. And I do not believe we're going to make it. Even at best speed, it is impossible for us to complete that mission. That's interesting. We finally reached the patrol sector, however we only have 18 hours remaining in which to find our friend. 
I do not believe we're going to make it. We have missed the opportunity. If I was to continue on towards the U-boat now, we would find it. However, we would not be able to complete the mission. Um, that makes that a bit of a waste of resources in my book. We're going to cut a little more northwest. We'll drop down to speed 2 and begin hunting procedures. And propeller noise have, has been detected. We are picking up a 1 to 3 group. We will increase speed. Um, 111 kilometers. I do not believe I'm going to bother come to, coming to the surface. And the reasoning for that is, if I bring us to the surface, I will lose the hydrophone contact and this, uh, this group will be lost to me. I could plot out a quick and dirty course. However, I've learned over time that the best thing to do is just simply stay underwater if you can and proceed as normal. Okay, I'll get us towards this target and I'll see you in a moment. 19 kilometers out and closing. I'll have the skipper jump on the attack periscope. With any luck, we will cut down the inaccurate contact of 10 kilometers to something a little more manageable. And that was the right call. We are coming up behind our targets. I'm going to go ahead and get a speed check using a trick I haven't used on the channel in some time. Since I have the skipper on the attack periscope, I have access to the chronometer tool. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is my normal procedure of placing a point on the ship. I think I'll place it directly at the waterline. Then I'm going to open up the skipper here, and some of you may remember the three minute trick. However, through a, a little bit of trial and error and a lot of tips from the community, it turns out that the most accurate representation of the ship's speed will be gained by going 3 minutes 14 seconds 0.75, or approximately 3 minutes 15 seconds. This should cut down on the slight amount of errors, especially at distances. We're going to go ahead and fire that up by unpausing and hitting start on the, chronometer, on the chrono at the same time. And we'll wait for the second hand to roll around three times, and then get close to the three, and we'll stop everything. See you in a minute. All right, we passed the three minute mark, and we're rolling on towards the 15 second mark. I'm going to pause it just shy of that, and we'll see what we end up with. Right about there seems fine to me. All right. And if we place another point on our target ship, right at the waterline, the most important part is placing the points in the exact same spot. If we measure the distance between the two, we end up with 370 meters, which tells me that this ship is traveling at 3.7 knots. We'll go ahead and lock that speed in. And it should show up as 4. And it does. The handiest part of this is we already have a line to work with to get our course check. And these ships appear to be on a course of 104 degrees. I'll go ahead and enter the same values for our second target. We have everything plotted now. Um, Skipper, what are we dealing with here? And you'll notice we're actually becoming visible. Um, we are too close to our targets. They are able to pick up our snorkel, I believe. So we'll go ahead and have Taff lower the snorkel for us. We should require it for a quick and dirty run at these ships. And we'll go ahead and place Mr. Community on the depth steers. I know it's a uh, nice calm day. However, we'll just make sure that we are not giving ourselves away here. Um, Taff, if you could get back on the nav station, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, Skipper, what are we looking at? What do we have ship-wise? Okay, we have an NA-1. Honestly, it's not even worth a torpedo in my book. And we have what appears to be an Empire Explorer. We'll go ahead and lock that down. Let's go ahead and get Seal the Centurion uh, working on those torpedoes for us. Um, this ship has stopped. The NA-1 is not moving. That's interesting. I wonder why. Very odd. Very, very odd indeed. Yes, the NA-1 um, doesn't want to play anymore, I suppose. Okay. Well, we're just going to worry about the... Um, <laughs> we're just going to worry about the Empire here, and then uh, revisit that in a moment, I guess. 
Uh, that's odd. I've seen warships kill their engines. Um, we're going to go ahead and shoot this. Let's say... Let's go with two one, I suppose. Okay. And with any luck, we should be seeing some uh, fireworks here momentarily. Fantastic. Dead amidships. Couldn't ask for better. Uh, we've slowed down a bit. We'll raise the boat. We'll have um, Mr. Quebec jump on the radio. We won't need the uh, hydrophone at the moment. And we'll um, worry about deck gunning our target. And Taff, let's start heading towards the conning tower, please. We'll get you up by the deck gun as soon as we can. Fantastic, Skipper. Let's get a little sight on the issue. And we'll have Mr. Quebec take a nap. Thank you for your assistance. Mr. Knox, onto the radio, please. We'll be radioing our kills momentarily. The NA-1 is moving again, so we scared her into motion, apparently. Okay, we have AP loaded up. Let's go ahead and do some damage. Went into the bridge for fun. Hey, and we managed to light her on fire with that shot. Fantastic. We'll let her burn a bit. Um, something I've noted over time is I'm just entirely too impatient when it comes to deck gunning targets. I don't give them time for the for the rounds to do any damage to them. All right, they've put the fire out. So we'll lay into her a little harder. Well, we've lit her light again, and she's getting a little lower now. Let that fire do a little damage for us. And she has become abandoned. I would say that'll do it for her. Mr. NA-1, you've brought yourself within range. Thank you. Let's go ahead and start working on her. Go ahead. Oh, and the car goes flying. Yeah, buddy. Wee. Sploosh. <laughs> Some of the little graphical errors in the game are just fantastic. That should do it for our Empire, I think. Um, let's go ahead and lay in a course for our NA-1 friend. Alright, the Empire's going down for us. Thank you very much, Mr. Empire. And the NA-1 has now been lit. Uh, the NA-1 is going down. The nose fell off. Oh, that's unfortunate. For them, I mean. The nose falling off seems to be happening more and more often lately. Okay. Fun little engagement to start with. Uh, can't complain. Let's um, head back the way they were coming. Perhaps we can uh, pick up a little more shipping. We'll go ahead and center the deck gun. And I'm actually going to have Taff reload for us. Um... Let's go ahead and bring up some of the rounds from below. Yes, please. And you can use your helpers to get that done. Thank you. Good job, Mr. Quebec. We already have a new target. There we go. We've got ourselves a target. Go ahead and get course and speed as I did before. We'll do it a little faster this time around. I'm not going to explain it fully. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, our little ship is actually making a fair clip. She's doing uh, 7.1 knots, which is quite speedy, on a course of 84 degrees. And we are getting a transmission from HQ. Uh, Mr. Knox is going to need a little help to get that done a little faster. And our new message, <clears throat> our new message is: uh, Crucial tech is on the Empire Lagan. It must be sunk at all costs. The Empire Lagan is in this very large convoy. 
Maybe we'll uh, spare the lives of our transport up here. I'm very, very close to this target, though. I may, I may just see what we're dealing with first, and then I'll make a call on whether or not we're going to try to shoot them down. Uh, let's raise the snorkel as best we can. I know they're outside of visual range, but you sometimes get a little lucky, and you're able to see them anyway. Uh, okay. We have what appears to be an Empire Tower. Um, I'm not picking... Aha, here we go. This... I believe this is a tanker. I do enjoy shooting at tankers. Mmm, the tanker changes the game for me. I would very much like to shoot the tanker. So let's go ahead and get that done. Alright, um, I'm not 100% sure what kind of tanker this is just yet, but we'll find out together. Let's see now. Definitely not a T2 tanker. Uh, an OL class? I don't believe so. A Dale class? No. War class? She very well could be a war class. Not a wave. I'm gonna go with war. I believe her to be a war class tanker. Let's go ahead and get a distance check on her. We'll take a long distance shot here. Just hope for the best. We'll set that. And we'll flood tube. Say two. And I'm going to take another distance check when that's done flooding, as we are moving at a fair clip ourselves. And once again, distance to target is about here, and fire. Alright, our Empire, the Empire Life, which is uh, ironic, but okay. Um, and I believe her to be a tower. Um, yeah, I would say a tower. Let's go ahead and flood two. Distance check is coming in at right about here. And fire. Okay, with any luck, we'll be seeing some fireworks shortly. There she goes. No secondary... Hey, and we've lit the fuel reserves. Oh, fantastic. Just fantastic. I would say very, it's very, very unlikely that she is going to stay up. Uh, she's already abandoned. Where is our... Oh, and we did indeed strike our empire. Looks like we clipped her right in the nose, as a matter of fact. Just on the very edge of her nose. That was almost a miss. Okay. Very close to being a miss there. Yes, our war class tanker is gone. She is gone. Okay. So we've tagged um, this empire. Um, it looks like Mr. Knox does need a little more help on the radio to call that in. He is my medic, not my radio operator, so um, he does need a little extra oomph from time to time. Let's go ahead and raise the boat. And we'll uh, ensure that this this empire <clears throat> this empire heads to the bottom. And of course, Taff is just about ready to be on the deck. Oh dear! All right, our empire has sunk. She's gone down, and her cars are flipping through the air. That's always fun. Okay, Taff, stand down. Skipper, stand down. Good job, everyone. Good job, crew. Two torpedoes, two ships. Can't complain. Okay, with that being said, we've got to lay in a course for our very large convoy that is escaping with some crucial technology, apparently. Okay, it is 2100 hours. That's good. We can operate under the cover of darkness for a change. Looking forward to that. Last time we took on a large convoy, we uh, showed up in the morning. Aha! We have detected the outskirts of our convoy. Alright, we are definitely approaching from a very dangerous side. We actually have a um, neutral target. Here we go. Things are becoming more and more interesting as we speak. Okay. So, um, we are approaching from a screen of ships. 
We do have a flower class here, so she is fitted, fitted with uh, sound capture. Um, Skipper, let's take another look, please. See what we're dealing with. Um, there's an empire. Uh, I believe it to be an empire tower. That looks like an NA1 in the background to me. Uh, another NA1. Um, another NA1. And hello, Mr. C3. I enjoy C3s quite a bit. I enjoy sinking them. Finding our one target is going to be difficult. Uh, let's go ahead and lock in this NA1 while we have the chance. And that NA1 here. C3. Um, this appears to be our flower class. Good. Uh, we have a Liberty back here. Now that in the distance, I believe, is a destroyer of some type or another. We have... Strange, another flower, ooh, and another destroyer. Okay. This is not going to be a particularly easy engagement. We're going to have to make it through this screen to begin with. Um, no, not a tower. Oh yeah, tower, okay. Got to make it through the screen of warships. Uh, that's another explorer in the background. I won't bother with her at the moment. Another Liberty. Uh, <clears throat> Empire Explorer. Uh, that appears to be an Isles class. And the reason you can tell is they're so junky looking. Um, another C3. Okay, picking out our target is going to be pretty tough, not going to lie. And, uh, some form of destroyer class. Yes, that is indeed a destroyer. What kind is it? Um, I don't... She could be a tribal... I don't think so, though. I only see one smokestack. Might just be the angle. Possibly a Dido class? Uh, ooh. This could be a Black Swan. I don't think I've tangled with them yet. Sims? No, I don't think she's a Sims. Not a County. Not a V-class. I don't believe her to be a Dido again. I only... Mm, no, I think maybe she's a Black Swan. Uh, ridiculously large front mass, angled backwards, another mass behind that, one funnel. Yep, I'm saying Black Swan. That's what I'm going with. Okay, folks, we've got ourselves a real party. Um... I really have no way of knowing where our target is going to be. Let's see now. I fired, what, four torpedoes? What do we have left? Mr. Peters. I need a quick and dirty torpedo hit, please. Uh, we have eight forward. I do not believe we shot any to the rear. So we should have ten total. Okay, we have ten torpedoes aboard. C3s will take a minimum of two, if not three. Unless I start playing with depth, I've been uh, getting a lot of um, a lot of folks telling me that depth is okay to play with now. Um, I really should have done some experimentation on my own. Um, okay, so unfortunately, folks, this is where I'm going to have to end the episode, uh, and we'll pick up the next episode when we make our initial run at the convoy. Um, consider leaving a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, links to my Discord and Twitter and Twitch are all found in the description down below each video, as well on as well as my About page. 
go ahead and hit us up. The community is growing by the day. Love to see it. And until we pick it up in the next episode, I have been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.